Hello everyone. Welcome to this video. Hope you all are doing good. Today I'm going to talk about the five main reasons why our balancing attempt will fail in the field and how do we avoid them. It is important because there are different studies claiming the significance of accurate balancing like the power loss due to unbalance is 0.11 watt per gram mm of unbalance and the unbalance is up to 50% more destructive to bearing life than that of other vibration sources producing the equal vibration levels. So a good balancing process is essential for successful asset management which is very much possible once we know what can go wrong. Here is the brief about myself. I'm R. Shakti Vail. I'm a condition monitoring professional. I'm holding a degree in mechanical engineering and I'm a certified chartered engineer from Institute of Engineers. And I'm ISO category 3 vibration analyst, level 2 certified infrared thermographer, AS and T level 2 certified in ultrasound testing, magnetic particle testing, and dipenetrant testing. So before going to the topic, let's get back to some basics. Let's quickly refresh some important definitions. So what are we going to balance? Of course, we are going to balance the rotors. The rotors are classified into two groups based on the rotating speed and the natural frequency. So what is natural frequency? It is the frequency of free vibration of a system. All the machines and machine components and structures have a number of natural frequencies. Then comes your resonance. What is resonance? It is the condition which occurs when the forcing frequencies coincide with one or more natural frequencies, which amplifies our vibration. So forcing frequencies typically are the frequencies of your unbalance, your misalignment, looseness and other defects. So, and what is critical speed? This is a special case of resonance where the vibration so caused by the rotation of rotor. So it is the rotating speed at which the rotor itself going into a bending resonance. Then what is rigid rotor? The rotors that are operating below 70% of the critical speed are called rigid rotors and rotors that are operating above 70% of the critical speed is called flexible rotors. So in this video we are going to talk about rigid rotors alone. Okay, let's answer some what, why and how. So let's answer the first question. What is unbalance? In simple terms it is an unequal distribution of weight of the rotor about its rotating center line. So ISO defines the unbalance as the condition which exists in a rotor when the vibratory motion is imparted to the bearings as a result of a centrifugal forces. Oh, and what is balancing? The act of determining the amount and the location of heavy spot and applying the correction. The heavy spot is nothing but your unbalanced vector location in your rotor. Let's answer the next question. Why unbalance? What are the causes of unbalance? Here are some of the causes of unbalance. The first one is the blow holes in the casing. The blow holes and sand traps in a casting can cause a significant unbalance due to the weight loss. Then the clearance and tolerances. The common cause is the stack up of tolerances. The take up in clearance shift the weight to one side of the shaft center line which will produce the unbalance effect. Then the eccentricity, it is the case when the geometric center line is not coinciding with the rotating center line which will produce an unbalanced force. Then the missing parts, fasteners, bolts, nuts, washers, bushes. If we miss any of this, this could contribute to the unbalance and also the uniformity of the fasteners are essential for proper balancing. Then the addition of keys and keyways. 
the pulley manufacturers, motor manufacturers, they do balancing of the respective components with full keys or half keys or without keys. When we assemble them in the site and we run the equipment, we may face the unbalance. Then comes your corrosion and wear, which is the result of the operation, which can cause a non-uniform thickness around the rotor, which result in the unbalance then the distortion it is common for equipment operating at high temperatures this may be due to a thermal sag or improper stress relief this will change the shape resulting in the unbalance then the last one is the deposits it may be due to the dirt from the process if it deposits non-uniformly around the rotor it can cause the unbalance and if the deposit breaks from some some location it can cause a severe unbalance all of a sudden so the next question is how to balance so there are three possibilities to balance the rotor add remove and eliminate the first one add adding the weight exactly opposite to the unbalanced weight remove finding the unbalanced location and removing the weight from there and eliminating the sources like material coating or buildup or replacing the missing parts or replacing the missing weights so it's common for new vibration analysts or technicians to make mistakes but sometimes even the experienced analysts or technicians can still make mistakes. Let's see the mistakes one by one. The first mistake would be the faulty diagnosis of unbalance and wrong procedure. So there, there are some balancing syndromes among the people like if it is a rotating equipment with a rotor or it's a fan and it is vibrating it should be balanced and if the spectrum is showing high 1x then it is an unbalance so vibration in the vibration is high in horizontal or radial direction then it is an unbalance so these are all the blindfold balancing symptoms of peoples so here are some facts. So vibration at one X is not always unbalanced. There are different kind of problems which will exhibit the one X RPM in your spectrum are misalignment, eccentricity, structural weakness, bend shaft and resonance. So the balancing would be your lost option. Before that, you need to correct all the abnormalities mentioned above. So how do we improve our diagnosis? The first thing to do is to understand the machine and its failure modes from the operational perspective regarding if the machine having material deposit or it has a wear and tear in the rotor. This will help us to assess the possibility of unbalance in the first place. Then we know the relationship of the centrifugal force is m omega square r which means the amplitude will vary with square of the rpm so we can vary the speed and we can change the amplitude which will help us to confirm the unbalanced condition then the classic indication of your spectrum high 1x rpm peak in your spectrum which would be normally 80 percent of your overall amplitude and you would see a sinusoidal time wave form and next thing is a phase measuring phase will help you in confirming the unbalanced condition we could see a 90 degree phase difference between the horizontal and vertical direction in the same bearing and 0 to 180 degree phase difference when compared with two different bearings in the either side so based on this we can even confirm the type of unbalance if it is a static unbalance we would see approximately zero degree phase difference and if it's a con 
couple and balance we would be expected to see 180 degree phase difference between the two bearings and it will vary between 0 to 180 if it's a dynamic and balance and we need to ensure the phase and amplitude is steady the next thing we could do is the inspecting the machine rotor this inspection would give us the fair idea about the machine whether there is anything wrong in the machine to confirm the unbalanced condition the second mistake is in the instrument or analyzer setting so first one is selecting the balancing pace convention so each and every analyzer have this setting whether the phase would be leading or lagging so this will decide the weight location with respect to the direction of rotation of the rotor so most analyzers are defaulted to a lagging phase which would give the um, positive phase angle which means the angles are increases in the opposite direction to the rotation the next setting is the trial weight removal setting in the course of balancing the analyzer may ask you to keep the weight on or off so if you're keeping the trial weight off you need to remove the weight from the rotor sometimes we may miss this and or we can we may select the wrong setting and we leave the trial weight in the rotor which will not give the desired result then the wrong entry of the actual angles and weights in the analyzer so during the startup of the balancing program the trial weight location by default will be taken as zero degree so once we are changing the trial weight location from the reference point we need to enter the exact location of the trial weight and also we need to enter the trial weight amount exactly which follows for the final weight amount and the final weight angle the third mistake is the incorrect trial weight there are some thumb rules when it comes to a trial weight calculation the first thumb rule is the trial weight added should produce a force at the bearings which is equal to 10 percent of the rotor weight this is to ensure safety of the equipment oftentimes we might have seen or we might have experienced we have placed a trial weight and it would be causing a very high vibration which means we have added excessive trial weight so it could cause damage to the equipment during the course of balancing the next thumb rule is 30 30 rule which means the added trial weight should produce at least 30 percent change in amplitude and 30 percent change in the phase which would ensure the proper balancing result the proper balancing response to us so how do we calculate the safe or correct trial weight we can calculate the trial weight based on the rotor weight rotor radius and rotor speed there is a formula for this we are going to discuss that in a moment then if we don't have any clue about weight radius or speed we can use the existing mass in the rotor we can have a look at the rotor and we can get a fair idea of existing trial weight we can decide the trial weight based on the existing weight so formula for calculating the trial weight so this is the typical formula for calculating the trial weight and this is based on our first thumb rule so in this formula your f is your force in kg force and w is your trial weight in grams r is radius in centimeters however you can change the units according to your requirement so and we have a example for this formula if we have a rotor weight of 1000 kg and the force would be 10 percent of the rotor weight which is 100 your or let's say your rpm is 3000 and radius is 50 centimeters by applying formula you would get the trial weight as 22.22 grams the fourth mistake is wrong placement of balance weight 
I hope from the poster you understand the importance of placements. Okay, so sometimes it may happen that you are keeping the trial weight exactly on the heavy spot, which is very unfortunate. So there is a way out to correct this problem from the reference ran. You may came to know that where is my heavy spot location. So you can smartly keep your trial weight exactly opposite to the heavy spot. Then forgetting to remove your trial weight. So as discussed in the settings part, so you're selecting to keep the trial weight on if and if you're forgetting to remove the trial weight, this could drain your balancing process. Then the weight is placed in the opposite direction with respect to the instrument settings. So this is also based on your settings, whatever you are doing in your analyzer or instrument, you should ensure that same is applied in the site also. So, and wrong marking of the angle in the rotor the manual errors while marking the rotors could happen while counting the number of blades or number of supports you could end up in wrong marking and the improper fixation of weight this includes temporary welding and orientation of your weight the temporary welding has two things you need to consider the amount of weld welding mass added to your weight and you need to ensure that your temporary welding is strengthened after once the balancing is completed. The orientation, your balancing mass should be placed in a such a way that it should not disturb the process flow and it should not get removed easily. And the fifth reason is the resonance and beating condition in the equipment. So we know the resonance occurs when the forcing frequency coincides with the natural frequency. And we could see a highly directional vibrations when we could see the ratio of six to one from one direction to another, let's say horizontal to vertical, if it is higher than about six to one. So it normally indicates other problems rather than your unbalance particularly a resonance problem. So we cannot balance the machine which is at resonance. As we see, the face will not be steady and we could see at resonance there is a 90 degree phase shift and 180 degree phase shift as it passes through. So the next one is beating condition. So beating can occur when either two frequencies lie close to one another or a single frequency is continuously changing from the amplitude and frequencies. So this would this could normally happen in emissions which are sharing a common basis or they are in the close proximities and operating at uh, RPMs closer to each other. So these two frequencies will be going in, in and out of synchronization every time. So when they are in phase, the vibrations will be amplified. When they are out of phase, the vibrations will be very less. So this could result in unstable phase, So which makes the balancing program a difficult one. So here is the summary of five reasons why your balance could fail in the site the first one is false diagnosis of unbalance and wrong procedure and the second one is the mistakes which we are doing in the instrument or analyzer setting third one is your incorrect trial weight and fourth one is the wrong placement of balance weights and the fifth one is the resonance and beating conditions i hope you understand the possibilities of these mistakes and how to avoid them. I believe you avoid them when you do the balancing next time. Thank you very much for your time and for more videos related to condition monitoring and reliability, please subscribe to the below YouTube channel Proactive Reliability Mindset. Thank you very much.